Hello everyone! I hope you're ready for another adventure, because today Wayne continues to read The Mouse and the Motorcycle by Beverly Cleary. Yay! Always remember that as we go through these amazing stories and read these outstanding adventures, all you have to do is press the CC button in your YouTube link to be able to follow along with the words. I believe that Madam Owl would be perfect to join us for this adventure. Now that she's here, let's jump in. Yay! The Mouse and the Motorcycle, Chapter 2, The Motorcycle. Except for one terrifying moment when the boy had poked his finger through the mouse hole, the hungry young mouse named Ralph eagerly watched everything that went on in room 215. At first, he would disappoint at the size of the boy who would occupy the room. A little child, preferably two or even three, would have been better. Little messy children were always considered about leaving crumbs on the carpet. Oh well, at least these people did not have a dog. If there was one thing Ralph disliked, it was a Snoopy dog. Next, Ralph felt hopeful. Medium-sized boys could always be accounted on to leave a sticky candy bar wrapper on the floor or a bag of peanuts on the bedside table where Ralph could reach them by climbing up the telephone cord. With a boy this size, the food, though not apt to be plentiful, was almost sure to be good quality. The third emotion felt by Ralph was joy when the boy laid the apple core by the telephone. This was followed by despair when mother dropped the core into the metal wastebasket. Ralph knew that anything at the bottom of a metal wastebasket was lost to a mouse forever. A mouse lives not by crumbs alone, and so Ralph experienced still another emotion. This time, food was not the cause of it. Ralph was eager, excited, curious, and impatient all at once. The emotion was so strong it made him forget his empty stomach. It was caused by those little cars, especially the motorcycle and the <laughs> sound the boy made. That sound seemed to satisfy something within Ralph. It was as if it had been waiting all his life to hear it. <laughs> Went the boy. To the mouse, the sound spoke of highways and speed, the distance and danger and whiskers blown back by the wind. The instant the family left the room to go to dinner, Ralph scurried out of the mouse hole and across to the threadbare carpet to the telephone card, which came out of the hole in the floor, beside the table. Ralph scolded his mother from the mouse hole. You will stay away from that telephone cord. Ralph's mother was a great worrier. She worried because their hotel was old and run down, and because so many rooms were often left empty with no careless guests to leave crumbs behind for mice. She worried about the rumor that their hotel was going to be torn down when some new highway came through. She worried about her children finding aspirin tablets. Ralph's father had tried to carry an aspirin tablet in his teeth pocket. The aspirin dissolved with unexpected suddenness and Ralph's father had been poisoned. Since then, no member of the family would think of touching an aspirin tablet, but this did not prevent Ralph's mother from worrying. Most of all, Ralph's mother worried about Ralph. She worried because he was a reckless mouse. He stayed out late in the daytime when he should be home safe in bed. She worried when Ralph climbed the curtains to sit on the windowsill to watch the chipmunk in the pine tree outside in the cars in the parking lot below. She worried because Ralph wanted to go exploring down the hall instead of traveling under the floorboards like a sensible mouse. Heaven only knew what dangers he might find in the hall. Maids, bellboys, perhaps even cats. Or what was worse, vacuum cleaners. Ralph's mother had a horror of vacuum cleaners. Ralph, who was used to his mother's worries, got a good running start and was already halfway up the telephone cord. Remember your Uncle Victor? His mother called after him. Ralph seemed not to hear. He climbed up the cord to the telephone cord, jumped down, and ran around the rows of cars. There it was at the end, the motorcycle. Ralph stared at it and then walked over and kicked the tire. Close up, the motorcycle looked even better than he expected. It was new and shiny and had a good set of tires. Ralph walked all the way around it, examining the pair of chromium mufflers in the engine and the hand clutch. It even had a little license plate so it would be legal to ride it. Boy, said Ralph to himself, his whiskers quivering with excitement. Boy, oh boy. Feeling that this was an important moment in his life, he took hold of the hand grips. They felt good and solid beneath his paws. Yes, the motorcycle was a good machine, all right. He could tell by the feel. Ralph threw a leg up over the motorcycle and sat jauntily on the plastic seat. He even bounced up and down. The seat was curved right to fit a mouse. But how to start a motorcycle? 
Ralph did not know. And even if he did know how to start it, he could not do much riding up here on the bedside table. He considered pushing the motorcycle off onto the floor, but he did not want to risk damaging such a valuable machine. Ralph bounced up and down on the seat a couple of times and looked around for some way to start the motorcycle. He pulled out a lever or two, but nothing happened. Then a terrible thought spoiled his pleasure. It was only a toy. It would not run at all. Ralph, who had watched many children in room 215, had picked up a lot of information about toys. He had seen a boy from Cedar Rapids throw his model airplane on the floor because he could not make the plastic parts fit properly. A little girl had burst into tears and run sobbing to her mother when her doll's arm had come out of its socket. And then, there was a nice boy, the potato chip nibbler, who stamped his feet because the batteries kept falling out of his cars. But this toy could not be like all those other toys he had seen. It looked too perfect with its wire spokes and its wheels and its pair of shiny chromium exhaust pipes. It would not be right if it did not run. It would not be fair. A motorcycle that looked as real as this one had to run. The secret of making it run must be perfectly simple if only Ralph had someone to show him what it was. Ralph was not satisfied with just sitting on the motorcycle. He, Ralph craved action. After all, what was a motorcycle for if it wasn't in action? Who needed motorcycle riding lessons? Not Ralph. He tried pushing himself along with his feet. This was not nearly fast enough, but it was better than nothing. He moved his feet faster along the tabletop and then lifted up them up when he coasted. Feeling braver, he bent low over the handlebars and worked his feet still faster towards the edge of the bedside table. When he worked up a little speed, he would coast around the corner. He scraped his feet on the table topic to gain momentum. In a split second, he would steer to the left. At that moment, the bell on the table phone rang half a ring, so close it seemed to pierce the middle of Ralph's bones. It rang just a half ring, as if the girl at the switchboard realized she had rung the wrong room and had jerked the cord out before the ring was finished. That half a ring was enough. It shattered Ralph's nerves and terrified him so that he forgot about steering. It jumbled his thoughts until he forgot to drag his heels for brakes. He was so terrified that he let go of the hand grips. The momentum of the motorcycle carried him forward and over the edge of the table. Down, down, through the space tumbled Ralph with the motorcycle. He tried to straighten out to turn the fall into a leap, but the motorcycle got in his way. He grabbed in vain in the air with both paws. There was nothing to clutch, nothing to save him, only empty air. For a fleeting instant, he thought of his poor Uncle Victor. That was the instant the motorcycle landed with a crash in the metal wastebasket. Ralph fell in a heap beside the motorcycle and lay still. Wow, I think that is a really good place to end today's story with Ralph in this motorcycle. What did you think about the story, Madame Al? I thought that was an interesting part too. But come back again, and we'll find out more, okay? And we hope to see you again, here with Wayne Reads. Thank you for joining us for this amazing adventure, and we can't wait to see you again soon. Bye-bye!